In this video, we are going to look at course organization. The tips in this video are essential for asynchronous online courses. They also work great for any course format, including face-to-face -face courses. My first tip for any online course is to use your learning management system at your institution. Students expect to go to one central place and find all their course materials. It also provides a secure platform for communication with students that meets FERPA requirements. At ISU, we currently use a Sakai-operated platform called ReggieNet. Your ReggieNet site is like your course website, so you want to make sure it is well organized with a predictable layout. Beginning with your course overview page, you should edit this section to be welcoming for your students, as this will be their first impression of the course. This is a great space to provide some directions for students to orient them with your site as well. For example, you could add some text that shows your course schedule. You could also add some navigational directions like click week zero getting started to begin. This left hand column is where students will click to navigate your course. So it is essential it is intuitive. ReggieNet has a variety of tools that can be reordered in this column. Perhaps one of the most useful tools is the Lesson tool that will allow you to build weekly modules for students to complete. My final tip before we actually dive into the ReggieNet platform itself is to embed all of your weekly materials and directions within each of your module pages. If students need to hunt for something, they may not complete it. Now okay, so I thought I would begin by giving you a tour of one of my existing ReggieNet sites and then show you a few tips for getting started on uh, my ReggieNet site for the fall semester that I have not done anything with yet. So this is my spring ReggieNet site for um, a course that I teach. And this was a face-to-face -face class that we switched um, to online halfway through the semester. This is that overview page I was talking about where you can make a welcoming uh, front page here. And because this was a face-to-face -face class, I walked through this, uh, students through this in person. If this were an online course from the start, I would probably have additional directions that pointed them to where they should get started in my navigation bar. You can edit this right here by clicking the edit, um, this edit button right here. And it's basically one big text screen. So it's the same as in the lessons tool when you have just um, some text to edit, you can put pictures or videos in as well. So let's take a look here along the sidebar. This is that navigation panel that I talked about, and this is the part that really needs to be very clearly um, organized for your students. So if you're looking over here, you can see some of the different tools that I use. I use some of the built-in tools like a sign-up tool. Um, I have a link to Zoom in OneNote so the students can access it right from, from here. And then anytime you see this book, that's the lessons, uh, the lessons tool. And this is the one I'll show you how to begin um, shortly. So you can see here that each week, even though it was a face-to-face -face class, you can still see that each week I had a lessons page. So when I click on that, um, I had a predictable layout for students. I had um, I was a twice a week class, so I chose um, to split up the weeks um, in, the, in the left hand bar. And then I had week 1A, I called it, and week 1B down here. But for each of those, I had um, the topics for the students, what they could plan on learning, and a checklist of things that they should do prior to coming to class. That's the way I chose to organize uh, my class. I used a flipped classroom approach. So they did uh, more of the direct instruction at home so that we can do more application-based activities during class. Um, you'll see here that I even have materials and links for class preparation. All of their materials, anything that they needed to do was right here in ReggieNet, so they're not going to multiple places. Whether I have them stored in the resources folder or somewhere else um, on the web, I can put hyperlinks to all of my tools here, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, I also had, because this was a face-to-face -face class, I knew that sometimes we were going to use tools in class, and I made sure I had links ahead of time here so that the students could use those during class. And that's how I set up every single week. Um, this predictable layout made it very easy for us to transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online. You can see I started putting an asterisk next to those weeks when we made that switch. The main difference was in week nine, I just, I made that, that was the week that we were asked to put everything up online where we were given the extended spring break. So instead of content that they had to complete, that week I had posted it a little bit early for them 
so they could um, get themselves prepared to make that shift to e-learning. But my students were already uh, regularly checking ReggieNet for all of their materials. So this was a really easy transition. You may have heard CTLT call this a nimble course, meaning whatever I have planned, it's easy to make that switch as needed. So when you go down here, some of the things I included, um, and this is something you may want to think about if you're designing an asynchronous course, um, are just set some, I made a couple videos, I set some e-learning norms uh, for students. I asked a couple poll questions to see how students were doing. For example, I wanted to see, first of all, who was looking at this page, and I asked students if they would have access. Mid-semester, they were not planning on a, a, an online class. So if I push show poll, I can see that 17 students answered yes. Now this is not quite all the students in my class. So if I click this button with the dots and the lines, that shows me the student responses. And I have a list of students down here. I have it blocked off for you. Um, but I have a list of students who didn't respond to that question. And those are students I may want to monitor and follow up with. Um, so as I'm scrolling down, you can see I've used a variety of tools in the lessons bar, including checklists, embedding uh, media, embedding um, just uh, links to materials or hyperlinks to websites. And um, as we go forward, I'm gonna go to one more of these e-learning modules. You'll see now my the, the layout shifted a little bit from the face-to-face -face because I now put them in weekly chunks, but it's still a predictable layout. I included some, some little reminders to help keep scaffold this for students. Sometimes, they, when, again, when they look at too many places at once, it can be a little overwhelming. There was still a clear um, checklist for them, reminders about any synchronous opportunities, and then the actual asynchronous, asynchronous module is here for them. So um, each week I had some, I, I used symbols uh, with icons here to just give them a predictable pattern. So every week we did it, we started with a math talk, Sometimes we use different tools. I embedded my Flipgrid discussion board here. Um, and then I had a content development. So that was the videos and their readings. And then I always had some enrichment activities that they did as well. And this is the same layout that I followed every single week. So if I clicked on week 11, it looks very similar. Um, I came up with a structure. I just replaced the little parts. The nice thing about that lessons tool is once you have created your template. Like once I made week nine or week 10, and this is what my new e-learning modules look like, all I could, all I had to do was when I went to more tools, I can add more pages and I can check this button that says make new pages, copies of the current one. So once it was all in there, then I could just make new changes, retitle it. So let's say I had, I don't have a week 16, but let's say I had a week 16. I could do that, check that box and push save. And what that does is it puts a new page at the bottom that's a duplicate of, of that page that you just had. Um, I do want to point out um, an error that I made. Once I made a copy of it, I'm still, after I push save, I'm still on my week 11 page. So don't jump into making edits right away. Pay attention to what page you're on because I've once made an error and changed the page I didn't want to change. So um, you have to go to that new page. When I click on it, it looks the same, but now I can just edit the parts I want. I can call this week 16 e-learning, change the dates, those kind of things. So that's my big tip for you. Come up with a layout that you like and then go ahead and, and duplicate it. That will ensure you have a predictable layout and it'll just make your life a lot easier with all the formatting changes as you go down. All right, so let's look at what this looks like when you hit a a course that is brand new. This is the course I have not really touched my ReggieNet site yet. This is uh, these are the tools they had ready for me. Maybe I have added some of them in. I, I think they already had OneNote and Zoom Pro in in the toolbar for me. But if you don't see the tools you're looking for, everything can be found under Site Info over here. And um, if I go to Manage Tools, I can see the wide range of tools that ReggieNet has. So. There's the assignments tool, that's where I could have them submit things. There's an attendance tool, chat rooms, um, forums, those are your discussion boards, the grade book. Um, so this is where you can go to find those tools and add them and, and you'll push continue and save. I'm gonna cancel this for now because I haven't decided everything here yet. Um, but this is what it's going to look like. It's also the place, this site info is also the place you'll go to reorder what you have in this sidebar. 
So if I go to tool order, right now this is what I have here. And when I go to tool order, I can just click and drag and move them. So if I wanted to put this lessons page up top, I could do that. And I push save. And um, now the lessons page is up here on the sidebar. So I usually wait until I'm finished making things and then I, I rearrange later. This tool order button is also where you're going to go to hide tools that you don't want students to see. So let's say I make a template page that I don't want students to see with my lessons bar. I'll click this little gear icon and click make tool invisible to students. Now that doesn't mean the students won't be able to access it if you link to it. It just means they won't see it in the left hand column. So I do that to neaten things up for students as needed. I can still see it, but this symbol means they cannot. All right. I am not going to pretend that I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the lessons tool. I'm just going to show you some basics here um, because CTLT has trainings on all of these different tools. I will make sure the resource page that I give you has links to their website where you can watch videos and look at handouts that will introduce you to each of these tools. The lessons tool though to me is one of the most powerful tools because this is how I host all of my modules. I can link things in there. It's basically a big like web page that you can edit. Uh, over here, this is what it looks like as your main template. And again, they only give you one lessons page. You are going to duplicate this for each of your modules that you want. Um, I'm gonna click add content over here so you can see all the kinds of things that you can include. You can add text, you can um, link to files, um, you can embed content on the page. The main difference between embed and linking is that embed will actually show the tool in there. So if I pushed embed content on page, it's gonna ask me for that URL or embed code. So let's say I have a video over here that I want to use. Here's my getting started um, power, uh, video on e-learning with Zoom and PowerPoint. I'm going to click that video, pause, share it. Um, most of these web tools have an embed code, not this URL, but I have to click the embed code and copy this language. And I can go in and paste it here and push save. And now it will actually, instead of just linking to the video, it will actually put the video into my page. I can do that with a variety of tools actually, like Padlet is one of the tools I talked about in another uh, one of the videos. These are those online bulletin boards. If I had my students uh, bulletin board here and I wanted to share it, a lot of online tools are going to have this embed code. So I can copy it. It's fancy language that you don't need to know. Um, but if I add content, embed it on the page and paste it in here, it will literally put that directly into your module. I find that it's really helpful for students when you can put everything they need in one place. So I wanted to show you that. Um, my other recommendation here, there are links to all kinds of tools. Let's say you're using an assignment or a forum, you can just link to it right in the lessons page so they don't have to keep clicking out of it. You could, this is where you're gonna add those checklists, your questions, your comments. Um, I'm gonna uh, recommend that you, when you do add your text though, or any of these tools, to add them into small chunks. So if I had like week one dates and the topics in this first set of text, I'm gonna keep that separate from maybe direction set number one. I will add some more and I'll call this activity one and then maybe I'll put a hyperlink here and a hyperlink here. Um, I can actually hyperlink them right within here and paste the URLs. Um, it's important if you do these video, these texts in little chunks. Can you see how I'm hovering my mouse over these little chunks of text here? It's actually showing that they're they're separate. And then if I want to reorder them, I can just click and drag. So I can move that up to the top and I can put this activity one over that video. Now it's reordered my module. So small chunks are better because it just really allows you to reorder and make that structure. This might look a little overwhelming. There are so many tools that you can include. So the good news is if you go to your CTLT uh, website, which I will hyperlink for you, they have a couple of templates already ready for you that have some of these lesson pages set up that you can just edit. That might be a nice place to begin. Um, and then just take some time to play around with this. If you've not used ReggieNet much before, um, 
when you're playing around with it, your students will not be able to see it right away until you go ahead and push publish on that website. So that's why I'm not afraid to play around with my site right now. My students, when they log in, they can't see it. Just don't forget to publish it when you are ready. So that's just a, a basic overview of what you can do here with the lessons tool and where you go to find and add more tools. I will point you in the right direction to the CTLT web uh, webpage so that you can learn how to use all those other tools.